What is your concern here about the proposal that's making its way to the Senate? If you could change anything, if you could wave a magic wand, where would you actually start to implement those changes? Well, I think, again, as a, just to reiterate, uh, failure to reform health care is just, it's not an option, not at all, but we have to get uh, that reform correct. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, uh, you know, when we look at things like substance use disorder, uh, mental health challenges that we have specifically here in New Hampshire, it's a reminder that states need flexibilities. We need to be able to control the implementation our, on our end, uh, be able to control those costs, create efficiencies in the systems for our states, because each state is, is so different, mm -hmm. um, and, but still not have to worry about the down shifting of costs that we're seeing potentially out of Washington. So we've had a lot of good programs, workforce here in New Hampshire. Again, we need, as governors, the flexibility to control that implementation. You know, Governor, one of the concerns is that there's not enough market influences in this particular bill. Let me ask you about that because, you know, you know, I grew up in New Hampshire, a small state. We don't have a big population there, right? And so how do you make sure that you're getting the best deal possible for the residents of a tiny state like that? Well, again, when you allow states to implement their own plans, you're, you're taking more of the, the overbearing federal regulation out of it. Mm -hmm. when, when, when the federal government is not just creating the platform but controlling the implementation, well, then the politics are really dictating those free market dynamics. When you return the implementation to the states and allow them to do what they do best, mm -hmm. create those, that, that competition, if you will, focus on areas that uh, are needed for not just their states constituents, but also that are going to allow the market to do what it does best, um, that's where you're going to get the best results. I, you know, I, I, I got some concerns about this particular bill, and one of them happens to be the fact that if you don't sign up for health insurance, well, guess what? If that goes for two months, they have the ability, the health insurers do, to then tack on a 30% surcharge when you go back to sign up for it again. Do you have any concerns that there could be a little bit of a sort of... Um, you know, credit card risk type of thing here. You know, the credit card companies, if you miss one payment, suddenly, you know, that teaser rate of 3% becomes 30. Uh, that's a, that's a, an exact concern that we've seen here as well. There's a lot uh, still buried in this um, that, again, don't just allow the market to do what it does best. Uh, we don't need to be penalizing people uh, for, for their decision-making, their personal choices. Uh, we simply need to provide the best options for them, a, a low-cost options, mm -hmm. allow them to understand their choices on the provider side, more flexibility in terms of knowing price and price controls. Uh, that's how you let that, that market do what it does best, give the power to the individuals and not have the government come in and, and penalize them uh, every time they, they don't check a box right or don't get a form in on time. So, so what's your feeling about this current bill? I mean, do you, as you said, we need some kind of repeal. Well, it's not there. Play. Yeah, it's not there. And, and again, I, I'm, I'm happy that the process is moving forward. It's gotten through the House, mm -hmm. uh, and I have a lot of confidence that, that the Senate will do what, what it does. And, and my guess is the bill won't look a whole lot like it looks today. Um, the, no matter what happens, you've got to reach out to individuals. You've got to reach out to the market. You've got to talk to people to understand what they want to see mm -hmm. in this type of legislation. Washington does not have a very good history of that. I think as governors, we've stood up pretty strong. We don't all agree on every detail, but we've stood up pretty strong and said, listen to us because we're the ones that have to implement. We are the managers, the carriers, if you will, uh, of this plan to our constituents. Sure, and, what and happens you know in what's Hampshire better is on just the so ground. different. Let, let me turn that, to that's another, right. That's right. another topic that has been plaguing the state of New Hampshire and something that Donald Trump has been speaking out on quite a bit, and that's the opioid crisis. Any, any sense of whether the administration is really going to be able to lend an effort there to help you guys in New Hampshire as you confront this? I know that New Hampshire has been uh, really, in many ways, unfairly hit by this. We're, we're at ground zero. There's no doubt about it. It is a crisis that has taken a, a little bit of every city in town. There's virtually no one in the state that it hasn't been impacted by it in some way. You know, given the fact that we're the first in the nation primary, you had Governor Chris Christie, D President Donald Trump, uh, a lot of other very influential folks coming through this state, seeing the, the crisis firsthand, talking to families and individuals. Uh, I think they do understand the impact that it has, um, and it's huge. Uh, I'm, I've been, we've been working with Governor Chris Christie um, as he's been empowered by the Trump administration to really look at this opioid task force, provide mm -hmm. maybe some more funding. Um, I think we've done a very good job being on the front edge, the front lines, whether you're looking at prevention or treatment, recovery, being innovative with our approach, enforcement, working across the borders. Frankly, I think we do it in New Hampshire better than most places. We've had a lot of governors uh, come in and, and just look at our, our models and our system. We're, provide, we're happy to provide that help and, and lend a hand. But it's not a crisis that is going to turn around tomorrow. One of my main messages is you've got to get the politics out of it because there is a little bit of political 
political pushing mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the background there when it comes to public dollars. But you got to throw the politics out and just look at the individuals. I'm an engineer by trade, so I'm all about kind of looking. you got to figure out the outcomes that you want and build a system to meet those needs, yeah. uh, not the other way around, no, which unfortunately sense. government has it, a, a it, tendency it, to do. And it, it, it's tragic. These are people's lives at stake. Anyway, Governor Sununu, great to have you here. We hope to see you back on the program soon. Thank you, Trish. Anytime.